So you are the author of SDH for Stranger Things Season 4. Uh, you uh, worked there as a key seer together with uh, Jeff, uh, your colleague. Um, and I'm wondering, was this show uh, a very high level title, obviously? Was the show different uh, in your experience from others you worked on? Did you get more specific feedback or did the clients stress the creative aspect of the job? No, not really. And I think this is why it's it's funny because it's high profile, people know about it, but this is the way I've been working for years. And so some of the other titles that I've worked on have had the same thought through um, descriptors and the same um, widespread use of um, of those things. But it, it it was just funny to me because when we we were approached to do interviews and things, I I thought to myself, but this is just my job. Like this is this is the way I work, and so it was nothing different from my usual tasks. Yes, perhaps I realised that this specific series is based on its soundscape. Like it's very um, particular, and it really does work in a way that it presents mood and tone and switch of mood and tone and atmosphere like we're going from proper 80s upbeat happy music to proper horror type scary vibes and not everything's the same like you say I could have worked on a documentary that there's not really much going on in the soundscape and it might be a very different task but for this one I thought to myself like this show deserves the creative um, aspect and that's because we're trying to take the viewers on a, the same journey, well, not the same journey, but as similar of a journey as the hearing community are going on. And I think the only way to do that with SDH is by doing it in that, that way.